Welcome to this video on the topic of polynomials and functions. In this video, we're going to have a look at how we can use our technology to find the zeros and subsequently factorize polynomials. Now consider the polynomial p of x is equal to 3x cubed minus 14x squared plus 5x plus 2. What we're going to do is use our technology to first find the zeros of this particular polynomial. Now I've got two options in doing this in the calculator. The first one is I can do it during run matrix and the second one I can use my graphing feature. I'm going to show you both. To start off with we'll use run matrix so we can either navigate and click execute or just one. Next I'm going to go option F4 for calc and then I've got the option of solve and solve n. We want to do solve n because we're expecting more than one zero here. So I press F5. I then need to input this polynomial here and set it equal to zero. The reason for this is that we expect the zeros to occur when this expression on the right here is equal to zero. So I'll say zero, shift, equals, and then I'll plug in this expression. All right, my expression's in. Next step is I want to tell my calculator to solve for x. To do this, I press comma, and they say solve for x. Close the parentheses and then I say execute. It will give me a warning saying that there may be more, more solutions in existence, but we'll just ignore that. And then up here we have our solutions. So we've got the first one is, looks to be a non-rational number. It's all right, we'll just ignore that. Second one, we have a fraction, so that's clearly rational. And the third one also looks irrational. So what we want to do is we want to use this number over here. So this particular zero to help us find the rest of these. So I can say there is a zero at x equals two over three, just like so. And similarly, if I wanted to factorize that out, then what I can say is that this is a zero of two over three. So therefore I can say X take two over three is a factor of P of X. And I can fix this up even further because I can make it such that rather than having the fraction in here, I can pull out the one third, one third constant, and then it's going to be three X take and that's equal to what we have there all right now second way we can find the zeros is we can go back to our top menu by clicking menu uh, five for graph or we can navigate in and press execute and then we simply want to graph this polynomial shown over here so inputting that I hit draw and it's done an alright job, but I'm pretty sure it's not showing me all the roots. So what I'll do is I'll expand my V window out quite significantly, draw, and then I'll use G solve to tell me the roots. So there's my first root, again, non-rational. Second root is rational, but it doesn't really tell me. It's in, um, it's in a repeated form, but we can see that that's going to be two over three. And then this one over here, it's irrational again. So the advantage is this is graphical, whereas first one we saw, first one we saw, it presented in a fractional form, if I want. All right, so it gives me the same results. Now, factorizing this out, I simply use my algebra. So to find the exact zeros for this one and factorize it, I will use um, I'll use algebraic long division because I think it will be a little bit easier based on this guy over here. So let's have a go. X squared. And then we got negative one up there. All right. So what we find is that P of X is equal to least one third times three of x minus two multiplied by x squared minus four x minus one 
Now we might want to factorize this guy over here. We can use the quadratic formula, we can do it in our head, or we can use our technology again. To use the technology, again, because we've done this first two here, what we know is that these roots in here are not going to be rational because it's told us this root here and this root here are clearly not rational. So what we need to do is use the quadratic formula. So doing this, I'll simply key in the values. And lo and behold, the first root is two plus root five. And then subsequently, the second root is obviously going to be two minus root five. So throwing this down, we have X and this is the root, remember? So it's going to be, I believe, take two plus, plus root five and X minus two take root five. So there's our factorized form here and we have zeros at two on three, two plus root five and two minus root five just shown like that. All right, so that's one example. Second example is we have another polynomial. This one looks slightly more, it's just about the same to be honest, but it's probably harder. Let's have a look. Let's go through the same process. We'll go and delete all of this and delete this guy. And let's start off with run matrix mode again. So I go option, calc, solve n. I set the left hand side to zero and then I key in the values. So six X cubed and I'm solving for X it gives me the warning, which can be safely ignored. And therefore it tells me that there's only one root at negative one over six. Now the fact that this tells me only one root can insinuate potentially two things. First thing is that uh, there's only one root and it's a triple root or alternatively there's one real root and the imaginary roots are simply not or the complex roots are simply not stated. Uh, I don't believe Solvan can find the imaginary roots but all we need is one root because this is a cubic. Now moving on from there if we know that this is our one root here then what we can say is that x plus 1 over 6 is a factor or another way to put it is 1 sixth of 6x six plus 1 is a factor of p of x now solving for the rest of them well we'll take it back a step and we'll do this on the graph as well so we can go into graph simply key in the polynomial graph and then we can go g solve and root and what you can see again is that uh, you can see one distinct root there. Again, the solve n version gives it in its fractional form where this gives it in decimal form. So you can see that because it's recurring, it's going to be a fractional representation. It's not irrational. So it's up to you which method you choose. All right, now solving for the other roots, what we need to do is we can use is in this instance, we are able to use, we could use synthetic again, or we could use algebraic, but we'll use long division again, because it's quite an effective algorithm. So six X plus one, set ourselves up. And let's go for it. And thus we complete the long division method. So what we can see is that P of X is equal to six X plus one. And then inside we have X squared plus two X plus three. All right. Now, because we've got this quadra quadratic over here, what we need to do is we need to factorize this. Now, if I'm looking at this 
and I say, let's think of the root. Well, the initial assumption was it could be a cube root, but because you can see this quadratic here is simply not going to factorize down to 6x plus 1, that rules that out, which the second option means that we're looking at complex roots. Now, because of that, we won't be able to factorize this unless we use the quadratic formula. So we need to go up into run matrix, keying in this as the quadratic formula. We're going to get negative b, b squared minus 4ac. All right, and now two. All right, now this complains that it's non-real roots, and that's sort of what we're expecting. So what I need to do is set my calculator into complex mode. So I'll go shift menu, and I'm going to take it down into complex mode. I want to set it to rectangular form here. Going again, we have our first root. So we have a zeros are at, I should actually say using calc, zeros are at x equals, and it was one six, negative one six. Next one was at negative one, plus i root 2 and of course based on gas's law we know that if this is a root then similarly we also have to have the complex conjugate so the negative is going to be the root there so these are our roots or our zeros thus factorizing this so putting it in factorized form our p of x is equal to 1 over 6 and thus first one is going to be x plus 1 plus i root 2 and then x plus 1 minus i root 2 so here's our factorized form over here so in summary what we had a look at in this video was how we can use technology to help us in the factorization process of polynomials such as this. To do this, we first had a look at how we can use our solve n feature. And then secondly, we had a look at how we can use the graph and the G solve feature to find the roots. Some notable things that we learned was the roots works fine over here, but it'll always give you it in decimal form. Whereas if you use the solve n over here, it's going to give it to you in the fractional form or you can do decimal if you want but you got the fraction which makes it easier if it's a complex root then it won't show you this in solve and rather rather you have to work out using the quadratic formula